what's up YouTube, I'm back. So this year we did a total revamp on our fabricated housings. I wanted to be able to offer a product that I could uh, easily retrofit to whatever application I needed to retrofit. And I wanted to be able to have some standard some standard applications. We're gonna have 60, 62 to 67 Chevy two. We obviously have covered already. You can just buy a housing. Um, I get axles from Quick Performance. My standard stuff is uh, just use their 35 spline axle, five eights wheel studs, you know, the drag style studs, the nice ones. Um, big four new style ends. That's the universal end that I use for all the housings. The uh, There's some features that I really wanted to have in these pieces. One being those big four new style ends. That's a easy two and a half inch brake offset and ends are readily available. All the brake kits are out there. It's just a easy, easy math, right? The old style ends are two and three eighths brake offset just makes ugly math. So big Ford, new style ends, three eighths face plate drilled and tapped on the mill. So we uh, buy some, buy 1020 cold roll plate, good grain consistency, good tinsel strength, quality material. We get that from competitive metals down in El Cajon. Uh, cut the, we cut the exterior shape of the, of the housing faceplate on the plasma, take those pieces to the mill, drill and tap them. The holes are clean. Uh, they're nice and perpendicular. Like it's just a really nice configuration. So, uh, when we, when I did the design, I also wanted the housing to be symmetrical when looked at from the back. So obviously everybody understands that the pinion is offset from the ring gear because it has to be. So, but what we did was I moved everything over, added material on the faceplate. This made it. So when you look at the back of the housing, the back of the housing has equal length back braces, equal length axles. It's, it's really just a super nice configuration. This just aids in being able to assemble them faster. I only have to make one style back brace. I don't have to make two because there's no goofy offsets going on. This makes it less expensive to have all the parts pre-built and to put these things together. So I really wanted a three and a half inch housing option for the average guy, somebody that's gonna put this thing together in their, in their garage, right? And so I don't see any reason to build a three inch housing. Uh, I made all the parts um, I make that through bolt spring perch to make it so it's easy to use a three and a half inch tube. I just don't see any reason to use anything smaller than a three and a half inch tube at this point. There's not a significant weight penalty for using a larger diameter tube. It's far more rigid and it's just, it's more robust, right? So three and a half inch, 10, uh, 1020 DOM mild steel tube, which means that it's seamless, that it's not any of that welded, you know, HREW hot, where they roll the tube together and then weld it down the center. Uh, this is true seamless material. DOM stands for drawn over mandrel. Um, that stuff also comes from competitive metals down in El Cajon. So just ultra high quality material. Um, you can tell that it's that it's really nice material because we have all those reducer pucks that slide through the center of the tube and go onto our precision ground uh, bar. And those pucks always fit nice and snug inside of the tube. So just helps with overall, just keeping all the pieces straight. So. Eighth inch plate for the back wrap and the two side wraps. There's only three pieces. There's only three pieces to the housing to make that entire shape, which is cool. That's the advantage of having that new Amada press brake back there. We can make those pieces quick, easy, and accurate. The, um, uh, the internal bulkhead is 3 16 uh, That was another feature that I wanted to have. So I just really don't build carbon fiber body or fiberglass body ProMod cars. Like, the biggest tires I've ever really put on a car is say like a 1432, right? That's, that's really like, that's it. That we just don't, we deal in the world of steel bodies, steel, you know, stock rocker panels, stock quarter panel dimensions, right? So like you take your Chevy, Chevy two, for instance, I always, always go back to that example. You put, you, you put that car, you put a Chevy two at a five inch rocker panel height and a 33 inch tall tire is touching the bottom of the deck lid. If it's not actually touching, it's very, very close. So there's no reason for me to build housings that have a 16 inch four link center, 17 inch four link center, even maybe 18, it's, it's still just, there's no reason for us to do it. We don't do that kind of stuff in house. So I just don't, I just don't support it. It's not the thing that we do. So we're always dealing with a rear end housing that's say like 36 inches from end to end, which means that we could put a 24 inch four link center on it and it's really good. So you're probably thinking to yourself, why are you talking about 24 inch four link center? What does any of that mean? Well, I made the bell or the flange, the tube to tube width on the face plate is big. Like it's a, a, it's, it's a little bit wider than what you might find out there. Like it's certainly wider than a Rhodes or a uh, Mosier or somebody like that. 
Well, in doing that, it made it so I can have a lot of overlap between the interior bulkhead and the exterior bulkhead. So the exterior bulkhead's three eighths because you have that you have the face plate or uh, you have the face plate meeting at the bottom, and then you have all the corner pieces meeting around the outside. You have this big joint around the outside for all that weld surface that goes there. And then where it meets the face plate. So I and I'm actually able to get those exterior bulkheads right out of the center of the face plate as well. So it just works out for sa again saving more material. So I've got over two inches of spread between the inner bulkhead and the exterior tube bulkhead to support that tube. So now you've got that double shear against those tubes. So the face plate's a little bit wider. It's got extra room for the double shear on the tubes. All, both of those features are, yes, make the housing ever so slightly wider than what you could really make it. Restricts how narrow you can make the four link. But like I said, I build chassis cars that are still have a stock style, steel body, steel rockers, steel quarters, things like that. So you can't put 33 and a half or 34 and a half 17 inch tires on those cars because they dimensionally do not fit on the car. So uh, you know, with a 36 inch housing end to housing end on a Chevy two, you can easily run a 14 inch wheel. So that really covers almost everybody that I normally deal with. So this housing is plenty strong enough to go as fast as you want, really on 315s. Um, it's robust. It's It's got some heavy duty features to it. So, uh, and then the other thing that was cool about making this thing wider is that you now have a shorter tube that you don't have to have as much axle, you don't have, have to have as much tube sticking out of there. And that helps with the uh, overall rigidity of the assembly. So now my back brace, I've got two inches of tube support, you know, two inches between those bulkheads supporting that tube. Back brace on the backside running from the housing length over down on the tube. And then since I didn't make the back brace super, super wide, I have plenty of space for the leaf spring perch. So to me, it was the best of all the worlds. I build lots of leaf spring housings. And if it doesn't have leaf springs, then I'm most certainly putting a four link on it. So that's why I went ahead and just catered to those two options. And I feel like I came up with the best of all those configurations. So, and the other thing was too, is this was able, keeping this, the way that I did it, keeping it somewhat modular, keeping the my drawings all in, in one in one section. So it's just one physical model that's in the computer and I can and to make the changes that I want. I was able to keep the prices down on doing these housing. So like a fully loaded leaf spring housing that's gonna have nice fill cap drain on the bottom, magnetic drain on the bottom, big Ford billet ends on it, and a set of through bolt spring perches is only uh, 1800 bucks. So that's like in the world of competing with a lot of the stuff out there, but with some of the features that you wouldn't normally get. So that was where I wanted to live. I've, I have the, automa the automation capacity to do that stuff. Like we make our housing faces 10 at a time. So we just, they're done, right? So we cut them on the plasma, drill them, boom, we have them on the shelf ready to go. And then we, the way that our process is gone is that we build the center piece first. So now I can just have centers laying on the ground and then I cut tubes and then we put the tubes in the center. So this helps a whole bunch with, I don't have to waste a bunch of tube. I'm not over here building every housing at 60 inches and then chopping 10 inches off of either side to waste that material. You call me and you order a housing, I build the housing to that length and there's just so much less waste, right? And when the tubing is $15 a foot, you can see how wasting 30, 40 bucks on a housing every single time you build one, you know, it just adds up in the long run. So yeah, so that's the introduction to this video. The rest of it, I will uh, will be not with me in it, so that makes it way better. And so, uh, yeah, so here we go. Let's uh, check out the rest of these features. <clears throat> okay, so this is the giant rotating fixture. So it's actually, I mean, I guess it's not that giant, but it's reasonably big. It's got four caster wheels, four by four construction. You can see that I went ahead and mocked up this housing on here. This center piece is already welded together. You see all this is one piece. You can see the heat affected zone from the inner bulkhead. You can also see that there's a gap there. The, uh, dr there's a breather that drills in right here. This helps to keep it so you don't have oil splash coming out like a breather, like in the center hole or something like that. So that inner bulkhead has a little keyway in it right there. And then there's a matching one on the bottom. So A, the bulkheads can go in either side, up or down. There's not a, uh, right, and, there's not a right and wrong way for that inner bulkhead. 
Uh, here's your exterior bulkhead. This exterior bulkhead is 3 8 So this guy ends up meeting up with this 3 8 faceplate. The axle tube is here. This ends up getting welded around this outside. So this ends up as a, you know, this could be, uh, this is gonna end up being a hot joint. And then you have the tube welded in there. So I go ahead, this piece actually comes out of the inside of the faceplate. So these two pieces are made from the inside of the faceplate. I've got this big heat sink effectively at the exterior edge right here to weld that tube to. So this is the exterior bulkhead. There's the interior bulkhead. So you can see how wide that width is in between those two bulkheads. So you can also see how wide the bell is and you can see that it's perfectly symmetrical as well. So when you look at this thing, it's looks, it looks really, really good from the back. I've always loved that look and I knew that I, that was gonna be mandatory for when I built this, uh, when I built my own piece. So half inch thick on this upper plate right here. You can see how thick that guy is. You can see all the tab and keys, and then you come around to the inside, and you can see all the tab and keys up and down. This guy is removable. This is the pinion center. This guy is removable. So this is holding the two pillow blocks on the inside that the bar slides through. You can take the bar out, take this bracket out, and then you can get inside of here because this face is open so you can weld the inside. It makes it really easy to help assemble this guy. So you got more tabs and keys, more tab and keys. This exterior flange is half inch. That bolts into this uh, rotating piece here. I machine these, uh, machine these inner pivots. Got this pillow block bearing from McMaster car and this thing actually rolls really easy. Got a couple pins right there. And so yeah, this thing turned out really good. So we actually, I also have this monstrous four by eight table. You can put a straight edge across this guy and it's you know within like 10 thousandths, like it's really flat. Um, I actually rolled this, I bought this uh, 72 inch long bar cause I wanted to be able to build 60 inch housings. So I didn't want to get a 60 inch bar, that wouldn't help me. So I got that 72 inch long bar and it's hard to put a feeler gauge under it anywhere. Like it's, this table is impressively flat. This is from that sort of flat company. I guess somebody ordered this thing and they didn't want it. And so I ended up getting it, I think it was like five grand. So, and we use it all the time. You can see my ridiculous IFS Ultra 4 stuff up there. So let's get back to housings though. So there you go. This is the inside. You can see all the tab and keys. I eventually would love to do one. If my mill was bigger, I'd love to do this guy out of uh, aluminum, but I don't have a big enough. I can't do it all in one go. I'd have to do it in multiple pieces. So maybe someday, but this thing's flat. Like, so we flipped this thing over and then bolted this to that, had all kinds of uh, clamps and pieces and it was held all the way across. And then we just started welding up the tab and keys and you take this bar and roll across the top of it. And it's, I mean, it's within 10 thousands. Like it's extremely, it's extremely uh, flat. So I machine these uh, end caps. So this is for the big Ford that holds the uh, billet in right there. And then I, I left all this material on here. So when we're welding these ends on, you can put the heat to this thing and you can pull some heat out. It's, it's actually really, really nice. Made these big, robust, big, robust tube clamps. Here's the uh, interior clamps that go, or not interior clamps, but the interior reducers that reduce the tube size. And so you can see how, since I have this draw, I have this entire model drawn, like I have the, I have this entire thing, like 100%, it rotates, it's 100% done in the, in the software. I was able to just make this four inch. So since it's a parametric model, I made this four inch that changes my size here, that changes my tube clamp here. I actually ended up having to totally redesign the tube clamps for the four inch, but that's okay. Um, but all that stuff just propagates. It's really nice being able to have that drawing 100% done in house. So this is how we put these guys together. Here's your, see how nice that turns. See how nice that turns. And this bar is so long, I can put both ends on at the same time, which is always, which is really nice. It just streamlines it, right? I don't have to slide it out and do this. This is my old uh, Chris Alston's one. You know, there's the pinion center there. It has these, has these bearing simulators on the back there, but the bar is not long enough to do both sides. So it was like you had to slide it, weld it all up, let it cool a little bit, flip it around, slide it to the other side, burn your hand, because inevitably the shit was still hot. So you could kind of get the point there. So this is the, uh, this is the face plate for my off-road housing. Um, I just left it on this thing because we were just starting to tinker with it. But this is the block of aluminum that I bought to machine. So you can see that the ring gear cutout lines up. This gives you all these matching features to make sure you put it together right. 
you can see how thick this whole thing is, right? This big heavy duty half inch thick flange right here, all the threaded inserts. So if you booger one up, you can just thread a new insert into it. Not that you guys care, but it's good for me. All these countersunk Allen's, so every, or counter board Allen's. So every single bolt hole on this face plate is clamped tight to this machined, this perfectly machined flat unit right here. So this is pulling heat out. It's helping to keep that face plate flat. The bolt, the bolt pattern stays pretty nice. I mean, it's still not like when you put the gear case in, you still got to work a little bit to put the gear case in, but that's just a function of, of how this stuff goes. But the bolts thread right in, that they're already threaded, like it's really nice. So yeah, that pretty much, I feel like that covers all of it. I figured I would just, this is my, like I said, I, I've built many a housings with that thing. Many, many a housings. This is way better. I like this 100% more. The other cool thing about this too, is that we went ahead and machined these clamps. We machined these clamps. We started playing with how much preload we needed to put in the housing. An eighth of an inch is what we ended up with. These clamps, I just machined an eighth of an inch shorter because we started off shimming it with those shims. So we were just shimming the, uh, shim the whole face of it, right? Shim this out this way, pull the housing forward, put the back braces on, get a little bit of tension in there. Um, so we ended up at, an, 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 I think it's an eighth of an inch. I'm gonna say it's an eighth of an inch. I could be lying though. I would have to actually double check the engineering. Now that we've made so many of them and they always turn out perfect, I'm, I can't remember. So I think it's about an eighth of an inch and something along those lines. So I just machined these clamps. Now we just put, now we just have a spacer, a horseshoe looking spacer that slides under there. You put the tubes in, you, you, we build this first. And then after that, we put the tubes in, after the tubes are in, clamp this guy back down without, the, without that horseshoe spacer in it, puts preload in it, weld the back brace on, put that back in, slide the ends through, or slide the bar through, put the ends on, and voila. So that's, that's, that's pretty much how that all works out. I'm really happy with this. It's a, uh, it's a nice piece. So moving on, let's check out some more stuff. Okay, so here's a giant pile of goodies. This is all the stuff that was sitting in front of me in the beginning. So here's that face plate like I was talking about. So here's that fixture. So this fixture will clamp into this big ass Haas mill right here. And you can actually see here's the four link one. So I drill and tap, or not drill and tap, but I drill all the holes in my four link brackets too, because the, the plasma thing, a half inch hole is like kind of okay in quarter inch, but it's like you can, you can ream it after the fact. So instead of wasting all that time watching the plasma drill all the holes, this, this machine with carbide tooling in it, you're talking, I think it's 40 seconds to drill all the holes in this thing. So way more efficient. It's an extra step, but the bracketry is significantly nicer. So there's the one for the four link bracket. Here's the one for the face plate. I got this huge clamp right here. This clamp slides over like that. This is a little, this is a little more tedious, but this has to be, this has to be perfect. Like I want these holes to be absolutely perfect. So this guy bolts that guy down, holds that really, really tight on there. You can see this register. You can see how that's got that shape of the ring gear and the exterior. That bam, you can see how nice that snaps in right there. This distance, so here's your pinion offset in there to make it so the tubes are the same length. But you can see these are nice drilled and tapped holes. And they're perfectly true. So these are the uh, register holes I was talking about. So you take this piece right here, and that registers there, sticks through the other side so you can weld it in. Here's a side cap. So this is a 316 side cap. We developed these, uh, we did a 316 housing for the off road guy down the way. So we're gonna do 316 end quarter for him because he you know, does heavier duty stuff. And so here's your, here's your inner bulkhead. And that guy s snaps right into place. So with these keys into the faceplate and those keys into there, this makes it really easy to assemble. So here's our one piece back braces, press brake, bitchin, and since I have control, they fit perfect. And I make them all the same length. So with a leaf spring, this pretty much makes it so we don't have to get into the uh, we don't have to get into the notching our stuff to fit on the axle tube. This is a, a S10 one and it's, it's pretty darn close. I think we'd still have to do just a little bit, but the wider ones, like this is a Chevy two. This guy is a Chevy two length. 
there's enough room right here that the through bolt perch sits here and we don't have to trim. So that was another thing is like if somebody's gonna buy this housing and do this project themselves, I wanted to make it as easy as possible. So you can kind of see though, with this width of this bell from end to end or from tube to tube, as I was saying earlier, this tube is not that long and there's a lot of support. You got that double shear going on inside of that interior bulkhead. There's a lot of support inside of there. So you can actually see, that's a little dark in there, but you can see all the weld action going on in there. Yeah, so these ones you can see don't have this key in it. I added this, this key piece got added for doing these uh, off-road ones. You can see right there, that's what that key welded on. So there you could go, you can see why we do this, uh, this exterior bulkhead in 3 8 I mean, look how beautiful all this turns out. But you can put a lot of heat into this. It's all thick, it's all super thick material. You've got this great face plate. There you go, there's the uh, keys there. Keys there. Oh, I forgot too. There's all this heat that goes into this front edge there. So it works out really good to just use that 3 8 on that exterior bulkhead, 3 16 on the interior. That's great. And so you can see, we just got done doing this one, putting the ends on. I mean, it's impressive. It is hard to tell if there is any misalignment in them. I mean, they're just incredible. They turn out so good. So. There's some welding detail. This is what you can expect out of your TIG welded housing if you get one. Here's a four link housing. There's all the ends. There's that billet support. So this billet support fits the four link bracket. It's the right spacing for the four link bracket after you weld, uh, after you weld those tabs on. These tabs go in the same place on the housing and this tube right here will match if you're using this size through bolt spring perch, put a, put a uh, Calvert split mono in there, put your, put this bracket there, not bra you know, put that bracket on there and run that tube cross member across the, uh, from spring plate to spring plate that, that lower support fits perfect on that size as well. So I'm only have to make, one size. So that was intentional because I don't want to have to make extra pieces for extra applications if I don't have to. So you can see a little more detail. I mean, these things are nice. They're very, very, very nice. Uh, this is missing. It'll have a wishbone mount. I have a cool little fixture that bolts on here, holds the wishbone perfectly centered. You know, obviously we can do whatever, whatever traction bar spring plate you want. Uh, another thing is this housing is going in a car that the anti-roll bar is going to be mounted to the chassis. And so it has the extra set of lower holes and no four link provision. You can see on these chassis bracket or housing brackets rather this, that's that normal bushing that I make. So this is going to be something, you know, 2000 horsepower or something like that. Um, that guy's going to bolt in there, fits this way. And the anti-roll bar is now trapped. The anti-roll bar is trapped inside of the four link bracket. So that's going to make the anti-roll bar extremely rigid. It's going to make it really easy to land the mounts. And it's just one less thing to uh, install in the chassis, right? So there's your housing bracket. So you can see how nice all the holes are. So plasma hole, drilled hole. You got three positions for the anti-roll bar. If you are doing the housing like this, or you could put a say like a, uh, maybe the upper, the upper section of the uh, wheelie bar could go there. I just leave them in there because there could always be options. You could also have this anti-roll bar style bracket and not even put the anti-roll bar here, right? So then you could still put it on the chassis, use those holes. Hopefully that makes sense. So back to housing, sorry I got tangented. So every single housing from here on forward, you can see that there's quite a few that are made right here. This is the only one that has this tab and key. Every single housing from today, from this video forward, all of them have that tab and key. All of them, uh, all of the drag race ones, all of these pieces are eighth inch. They all have that style and that sized weld cap. I also have an option if you like the bigger weld cap, like some, I know some guys like the off-road stuff's kind of nice to have a big ass fill cap so you can inspect a ring gear. That's kind of nice. So you can see this thing's all the way dialed in. 
This is gonna be the last piece that goes on right there. This was supposed to go on on Friday, but it got overbent because I suck at measuring. But that's gonna be the little final cap piece that finishes this guy off. Super, super nice. You, oh, there you go, you can actually see. It was, you see how I mismeasured it. So I measured that angle instead of measuring the angle when it has the back braces on it. But those will all be on there as well. So this cap got totally destroyed, but it's okay back braces. So hopefully this is, uh, I'm trying to think of all the stuff that I might potentially need to answer, but you know, hopefully I'm getting there. So here you go. This is a, uh, here's a housing that has the anti roll bar provision. So that bracket will slide in there. Here's the, uh, always need a drain plug, right? And the drain plug is magnetic, magnetic, nice bung in there. And the bung is flush to the inside. So all the oil actually drains out. So Here's all your pieces, you know, one, one piece center. I'm just kind of, uh, I'm just gonna try to go through as much as it, of this with this video as I can and, and hopefully I get everything. Big Ford new style ends, which is a Torino style. There's the back brace. What's cool is we take the time, since we build a lot of cars on a 24 inch four link center, I have this back brace where I, ch I cut this back brace in two pieces and it gets press braked individually. So I don't even have to cut that thing. So the, all the corners are relieved properly and it just fits. And it'll look killer with that other piece on the back, right? Those pieces I get clear anodized and it makes it nice for jacking it up. It clears the drain plug, got an easy fill plug. Let's see, where's my, uh... there's the, uh... so we, we have a tapered reamer that we ream this hole and then eighth inch pipe right there. So you could put a, a whatever style, um whatever style breather you want to put in there. But remember that it's uh, in between those two bulkheads, so it's not gonna get a bunch of splash. And then since the bulkhead has the top and bottom relief, then the oil that does get in there just drains back. So side pieces, inner bulkheads, back braces. This is how we manufacture the face plate. Uh, here's four link bars. So if you, if you end up wanting to order a four link housing, I have this entire assembly in the computer, so I know what the lengths of the four link bars are. I know what the wishbone is supposed to be. I can manufacture the wishbone. And like, this is all done on the Tube Dragon. So you can see all the amazing notches. And then I manufacture the slider out of 7075. It's inch and a quarter solid 7075 that we drill and tap on the, on the lathe. This guy's 12 inches long, so there's lots of overlap inside of there. Three quarter rod end in the end. Um, grease that guy up maybe every six months or whatever. Lower control arms are on the push, right? So the lower pushes and the top poles. So I do the lower since it's under compression at an inch and a quarter, 120, all rod ends supply rod ends that I stock. I stock tons of these guys now. Uppers are inch and a quarter, 120, rosette. They have hexes on both sides because I got yelled at and people didn't like not having hexes. So now I have put hexes on, on everything. Um, which is fair. I should have been, maybe should have done it from the beginning. Um, here you can see the quality of this tube. Like this stuff is super, super nice stuff. And it's thick. Beef, pure beef. Uh, here, this is, I think this is ultra trick. We design, I designed this to make the wishbone so you didn't have to do a standalone so you didn't have to add another wishbone set of tabs to the chassis. So now if you buy my four link brackets, you can buy the housing, I'll set the width for you, I'll set the wheel mount surface for you, I can put the housing brackets on, I can integrate the anti-roll bar into the housing bracket so you have one less thing to deal with. And I can, and if you buy the chassis side bracket, then I can integrate the wishbone as well. So I know what the, all the center lines are so I can make this wishbone perfect uses a high angle misalignment style rod end right there. And then this clevis, so this is the upright pillar. So when we did the Corvette a number of years ago, so the Corvette's been 380s at almost 200. And this housing or this chassis side bracket has the same bolt holes in it that that car has. So between those bolt holes and these bolt holes and this approximate four link length, the, the cars work, like it'll haul ass. So we originally did this bracket shorter than this guy, kind of copied what was already out there with some instant centers that we thought that we wanted. And we found out that we just couldn't get where we needed to go. So we ended up chopping, we ended up actually doing the chassis 
a second time because we wanted to change the turbos. It, there was just so much that we ended up changing, whatever, that's neither here nor there. So we designed, I did a water jet version of this pillar and then this, so this pillar has all these bolt holes in it. It's kind of like a poor man's, I'm not even gonna say poor man's because it's, it's not even cheap, but those adjustable brackets well, this guy is still adjustable in the fact that I can make this plate with the holes wherever I want it. But all I gotta do is just, I, I, I do in fact have to have another set of plates, but this, this guy's 16 inches on center. It's nice and tall. You've got massive quantities of holes for moving the instant center wherever you want and with a, any, with a number of different tire sizes. Remember that half of these holes aren't gonna work. Like you have a 28 inch tire on there versus a 32 inch tire these holes shift up and down based on what that tire achieves for ride height. So I made this clevis bracket, that's a 6061. It's been anodized, uses a uh, half 13 thread cert that goes in there, but that bolt pattern is that bolt pattern. So this housing bracket, so you put this pillar in your chassis, this housing or this chassis side bracket bolts on there. And then this threads through there. And then your wishbone mounts in between the four link brackets. So now I have an, a whole nother, mounting solution done that's based off of, hey, this is what my, this is what my four link center to center is gonna be. So this is what, and my four link is gonna be this long center to center. This is how long my wishbone needs to be. This is where my wishbone mounts. And this is where my anti roll bar goes. So I have a lot of this stuff already sorted out and it works really, really well. So like I said, this is, uh, this is stuff that I do make in house as well, this pillar. Again, this is uh, mild steel. I just use almost all of this stuff that's in these things is mild steel, except for the chromoly tubing for the wishbone, chromoly tubing for the four link bars. Everything else is mild steel. I can do it in chromoly. It's just way, way, the plate is just really, really expensive. So what I have done is made runs of all this stuff in chromoly. And when somebody really wants it, then we'll make it out of chromoly. But otherwise everything else is, uh, is it's mild steel. Easy to weld, plenty of tinsel strength. And unless it's a 5,000 horsepower screw blown pro mod, then you know, it's arguable as to where this, uh, where, where you need to go with that. So there you can see all the super nice holes. I do make these doublers as well. If you want doublers, if you have the proper bolts and the holes, these holes are, these holes you end up, after we assemble these things, we end up having to run the carbide reamer through these holes because they are so tight. So if you put the right bolt in here, with this perfectly true hole, it's not gonna wear the holes out unless you leave the bolts loose or you put the bolt halfway through or whatever you wanna do. So I find myself not really putting doublers on stuff anymore because with these perfectly true holes and the right bolt, it doesn't wear the holes out. So there's a little, there's a little, a little uh, rant, right? Uh, what else do we got here? I feel like, I feel like I'm looking at this thing, I'm 15 minutes in, I've covered a lot. Oh. You can get your through bolts. Let's talk price. Everybody wants to know price. I bet that's what's the burning desire. This housing right here with a wishbone mount that's not on there yet. So chat or housing side brackets, big Ford ends, your wheel mount surface, four link center that'll fit comfortably on this housing. Uh, here's the, oh, this is nice too. So let's just go through this real quick. Oh, I've totally got sidetracked. Look how nice that bolt threads through. A little Loctite, a little sealant there. Okay, sorry. Uh, anyway, all these bolts, a nice fill cap, drain plug, housing side brackets, the super cool billet lower plate that goes on the bottom for the support, the drain plug, TIG welded, big Ford billet ends, this housing, $3,000. So there, and then plus the shipping, but I can ship these things in a, uh, uh, 60 by 12 by 12 or a 48 by 12 by 12. And it's, I've found that UPS is approximately hundred bucks, something like, something like those lines. Uh, I also stock lube blocker gaskets. If you want one or you care, maybe you don't care. Um, leaf spring housing. So leaf spring housing, same deal. Those bolt, they'll come with the bolts. It'll come with the drain plug. It'll come with the fill cap, big Ford, new style ends. Back braces installed, just like you see. This housing, just like you see, plus those through bolt perches, 1800 bucks plus the shipping. So I feel like with all, when all the dust settled and we got all this stuff sorted out, I think I came in at a reasonable price for these things and an ultra high quality part with high quality manufacturing processes that helped to make this process more reasonable. Uh, I stock these bolt kits now 
for these guys as well. Obviously I have the traction bar spring plates. I carry all the rod ends. Like I can do the rear suspension 100% for a leaf spring car or for a four link car at this point. So that's 17 minutes of rambling. <laughs> Uh, I'm trying to think if there's anything else that I can cover. I don't feel like there is. I'm sure somebody will bring something up or somebody will be like, stop talking so much or whatever the situation is. But uh, yeah, so um, MIG welded. All right, so this housing obviously already welded this end. So what's cool about having all this extra heat sink on this guy is you can see how controlled the heat affected zone is. You can see how concentric the end is to the tube. And you can see how round this stays. It's got a little tiny flat spot on it. Nope, never mind. It had schmutz in it. All right, so that's really nice. And I'll just stab it in this one too. This really works good. So you don't have to worry about having to beat the axles in because the, the ends are still nice and round. Like, oh, see, I'm getting it stuck. Yep, there you go. So the stuff is really, really nice. And this guy, if you don't get this thing perfectly lined up, it's really hard to put on. There it goes. Yeah, so some little bonus footage if you watched all the way this long. All right, so it's a little dark, but here's that, uh, that other Nova housing. So you can see what I was talking about. So that back brace ends right there, and then there's the through bolt spring perch, which is super nice. It just makes it so you don't have to deal with that. And so if you really were hell bound on using U-bolts, this would help you too. You don't have to deal with that. So, and there's not a lot of unsupported tube. So also that's that big giant fill cap. If you wanted to have that big giant fill cap, that's entirely up to you. So I'll throw that in there as well. This guy's just chilling up here. We're getting ready to finish this whole suspension kit tomorrow. So this car is actually almost done. Okay, so I snuck out on the shop. Here is a, uh, here's that housing, or sorry, here's the chassis side bracket installed. Here is the, there's that clevis. You can see that the chassis tube, that force vector rolls right straight through there. There's the housing, wishbone. Wishbone always on the top, because why would you want to battle the wishbone to take the gear case out? There's some tabs. It gets a little doubler plate on the backside right here. You can see how awesome this stuff is before it's welded. It's how you get a nice result. Scotch-Brite and a perfect tube notch. So. Oh, this one's already, see? This guy's a floater. I said slider in the beginning of the video. I had to put a note in that. Rosette, rosette, and the tube. Sorry for the low light. There's the tube has uh, been machined. So those snouts just slide right in. It's really nice. In fact, I'm gonna grab one real quick. Okay, strange floater snout. Pure beef, right? So just take this guy. Sorry for the terrible footage. Bam. Slides right in, all right? All right, so you'll notice Super that nice. the uh, slider snout doesn't go all the way in. The plan is, is that we're actually gonna shorten that snout up a little bit. We were only able to machine so far into the tube before it starts singing and all that stuff. So we'll do a little bit of machining on the snout, a little bit shorter of a snout, and then a little bit on the tube, but still it makes it just way easier. So here's just a little final shot of the housing. They just, they turned out super, super nice. So. For now, I think I'm just gonna do TIG welded ones. I'm not 100% sold on the MIG welded ones. We did do a few of them and they just don't turn out as nice. So I don't know, let me know in the comments. What do you guys think? It's definitely a still an option. Okay, I appreciate you guys. And uh, until next time, you gotta listen to me talk for 45 minutes. I bet nobody actually listens to the entire thing. We'll see what happens. All right, take it easy YouTube, till next time.